So we've seen that the UART is a form of a serial communication protocol that sends bits of data one at a time over a single wire. But it is a protocol, so it follows a very specific pattern. So let's see how a transmitter actually sends a byte of data to a receiver. So this figure here shows me um, in time, and this is basically time zero all the way to the end, which is the end of the transmission, how a transmitter from this side actually sends something um, to a receiver on the other side over a single wire. So as it turns out that the wire that connects the transmitter and the receiver is generally speaking during idle kept at high, basically it's kept at one. And when the transmitter wants to send something to the receiver, it drives that particular wire to low and that indicates the start bit. And in here, I'm gonna to refer to bit and frankly speaking, what a bit is, is um, the length of time you keep the line at a very specific value. So in here, the start bit from here to here, I'm leaving it at zero for a very specific period of time. I'm gonna call it start bit and it's always zero. So the idle is one and a start bit is zero. And then the transmitter starts sending the bits of data one at a time. And in here, what we see is exactly one byte and there, basically from D0 to D8. And it, as it turns out that the UR, generally speaking, sends the least significant bit first, and then the next significant bit, and so forth. So again, this is start of time in here. So we send D0, then D1, then D2, then D3, all the way to D7. And at the very end, regardless of the value of the D7, whatever it is, it could be one or it could be zero, because it's a bit, um, the transmitter indicates that it finished sending its data byte, okay, or the whole byte or the whole data word that it's trying to send, and it actually raises the line back to one, and that indicates the stop bit or bits. And I'm saying bit or bits because as it turns out that this uh, length of time that you keep the line at high for the stop can be one, one and a half or two bits. And it's a half because we can keep it like just for half half a period of a, of a basically bit sending or like whatever the period of, of sending the bit is. So the important things to see in here is the following. So one is the transmitter and the receiver have agreed upon certain things. And these certain things is the number of bits that they are actually expecting. So if a transmitter is sending um, a word, the, the receiver on the other hand has to know how many bits a word is because it needs to know how to read it. So in here, I'm showing you that it ha it's sending a single byte, but as it turns out for UART, you do not have to send a whole byte. You don't have to send eight bits. You can send six, seven, or eight actually. So you can actually go from zero to five or zero to six or zero to seven for that matter. And uh, the number of stop bits is usually, as I mentioned a few minutes earlier, it's actually one, one and a half, or two. And that should be agreed upon before the transmission and the communication starts happening. And in addition, the UART allows us to send after the word, regardless of how many bits it is, it actually allows us to send what we call a parity bit. And that parity bit just, it's a top of error correction. So the sender, the transmitter in here, I call it sometimes the sender, but the transmitter on this side computes some sort of a parity. And this parity could be an even parity or an odd parity. For example, an odd parity will take a look at the, how many bits I have in here, how many of them are one. If it's an odd number of ones, I'll set that parity bit to zero in here, okay? And then I will uh, send I will send it along with the data. So if the receiver on the other side I actually receive all of the data bits and receive the parity bit, and there's a dis there's a difference in the parity. For example, it counted the number of odd, and it wasn't odd; it was actually even. It will know that there's something wrong that happened in that communication and it repeats it. And that's that's uh, the purpose of parity. In here, I'm not showing you a parity bit um, for our examples and our construction. We're not just going to use parity, but it is part of the standard. We can utilize it if we choose to. So more importantly, I don't see between the transmitter or the receiver any sort of a shared clock. So the transmitter and the receiver would agree upon the number of bits it wants to send, whether there's a parity bit or not, how long is a stop bit. However, they will not share any clock. So there's no wire that tells me, okay, the clock in here and I'm sending it exactly at the positive edge of the clock. So each one of them is running a completely separate clock and they could be completely different speeds out of phase, what now? And as it turns out that both of them, in addition to agreeing on how many bits, whether the parity and the stop bit is used, they have to agree on the rate at which you're sending the data. 
So in here, what I'm showing is D0 takes a certain period of time. It's exactly the same as D1. It's exactly the same as D2. But that certain period of time or the period for sending the bit is actually an agreed upon rate. And generally speaking, you don't agree on the single bit. You agree of how many bits per second am I going to send you. And you can communicate basically the speed. So the speed at which I'm actually sending it to you. And it's usually called the baud rate. So the receiver and the transmitter would actually agree upon some sort of a baud rate. And there are certain, certain standard baud rates. The most common one I've seen is 9600. Okay, so now we know how the communication protocol generally works. So how does it physically work? So what does the receiver, when does the receiver read the word? Like when does it know how to do it? So, and as it turns out that there's actually an oversampling scheme that happens. What I mean by the oversampling scheme is the, tr the receiver on this side, what it does, it always pulls the value of the wire it's actually monitoring. It always does it. So it's always reading it and reading it and reading it just to see whether actually it's still idle. Does it go low? Did it go fast? And, whatnot. and the rate at which it actually sees it or pulls that, it's called sampling. And we call it oversampling because as it turns out that you need 16 times the baud rate. So whatever the baud rate agreed upon, like let's assume that we agreed on 9,600 bits per second, what the receiver is going to do is going to multiply this by 16 and do pull that wire for 16 times 9,600. So it's going to keep reading it, keep reading it, keep reading it and so forth. Okay, so let's see in general, how does it actually work? So the receiver is actually polling the wire, polling, 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 polling. So what I'm interested in is here. So if it's polling an idle, nothing is going to happen. It's not going to start. It's not going to do anything. So the very first, the very first step it's going to do is it's, it's polling, it's polling, it's polling. And then all of a sudden it read the, the value zero and it was idle. So it's not idle anymore. So what it will do, it will actually start some sort of a tick counter. So we'll see some sort of a tick counter, like a normal tick counter we've seen, like a timer. And that tick counter, we're going to wait because we're sampling that line for 16 times the baud rate. So technically, we're going to think about it as, as our timers and I want to see 16 ticks. So, But before we start actually the 16 ticks, what this timer does, it does the following. It actually goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And when it reaches the middle, about 7, because it goes from 0 to 17, when it reaches the middle, I'm going to stop. And then I'm going to clear that counter and I'm going to count again. And the purpose of that is I am trying to align to the middle of a bit. So in all of the bits later on, my purpose of oversampling is to figure out where is the middle point of each one of the bits. And the reason why is because I want that bits to be stable and the wire to be stable and whatnot so that I don't have any bit of stability when I'm actually reading it on the other side. So ultimate goal of this oversampling is to do exactly one thing. And that thing is to estimate the middle point for each one of these data bits. So what we do again is from idle, we're reading, reading, reading. You can read uh, over 16, like you might be reading so many of them. But the minute you actually read an indication that it's actually going to zero from one and it was idle, you just count to seven. And that seven is half of that 16, like basically 15 and a half or whatnot. It's about half of that. And then that's it. So the next step is actually, okay, so you reach 15, you reset that timer, and then you instantiate that timer, or you try that timer or the tick timer again, and you wait for it to actually hit number from zero all the way to 15. And when it does, it, you are actually at the very first bit, and the receiver knows that this is here on this side, that that's basically my first bit, and I can read it so that I can assemble that. It does exactly the same thing about n minus one times, because n and n in here is the number of data bits that we agreed upon. So if it's eight, like in this case, I'm going to have to do it for the seven extra bits that are left. So you can do it one and a two and a three and four and five and six and then a seven. And then you stop in here. Basically, you read all the data bits and we agreed that we only have that. If you have a parity bit, you repeat that for another for another time to read the parity bit. Then what's left is actually the stop bit. And as it turns out, you're going to have to figure out how many bits you have in the stop bit. And uh, let's assume that I want exactly... Um, one stop it that means i'm going to run that tick timer for exactly 15 times and i will see basically that particular one in here okay so if i run it for one exactly for one that means i ran that tick timer from zero all the way to 15 i'm going to stop exactly in the middle of the stop bit and that's it if i have a half a bit i'll run it an extra seven ticks and that becomes one and a half bits if uh, if i wanted basically if i ran it an extra 15 so in addition to this 15 i ran another 15 that means my stop bits basically i did two and that's it and then after that i'm idle 
And that's how oversampling works.